Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Advent, Advent of Code. Um, I didn't have time to really tackle anything anything much new today. I just wanted to release a brief video this morning so that you like, so I don't get a bunch of messages saying, hey, how come there's no episode today? Um, first is that I thought some about like how to solve part two of yesterday's puzzle. I had sort of thought that like there could in principle be a chaotic thing that like never like just random stuff is always happening. And in particular, like even if it were something stable that's moving, the fact that like its position impacts its score made it like not so clear to me that you could automatically do this, but uh, so people pointed out that like all the actual problems, all the actual inputs do have a very stable and very simple end state that like just repeats indefinitely. And in fact, like this is sort of a simpler version of Game of Life. And so you are sort of guaranteed that it loops eventually, I think. Like, I don't think it is... Well, I don't know. Maybe it is no. Maybe there are, like, Game of Life... No. At any rate, like, no matter what your initial configuration, you eventually reach some kind of loop. And, like, the loop is not necessarily one in which, like, just the position is forever the same. But there's, like, um... You know, it can have a cycle that's many... Many... It can have a loop that's many cycles long. Or it can have a loop that, like... Uh, creates a glider, apparently. Like, there's a thing called, like, a glider gun, I guess, which is a shape that generates gliders, where a glider is, like, a shape that moves forever. Um, so I think, in principle, like, you could write a smart enough program to recognize any of those. Uh, but all of the actual advent of code inputs produce something very simple, which is a single cycle glider. Or maybe two gliders, I don't know. Um, and so what you can do is, like, it turns out that since it's moving this glider thing the same amount every turn, the sum increases by the same amount in between each generation. So I did a little bit of work on part two to see what the deal is with my loop. Um, I basically said part two of an input is to iterate step with R, just like we did in part one. And then I said take 200 and score them all. And this is a bit of fancy nonsense that says, show me the differences between successive items in the list, right? Um, we zip the list against its own tail, subtracting between them. Uh, and it, produ oops, it produces this. Um, well, here. It produces this. And these are the scores of successive the differences between generations in successive generations. And so for like a while, it's doing all this crazy stuff. And then like suddenly, eventually it settles down to just be 109 every time. So the score goes up by 109 every generation. Uh, and you can calculate what generation this is. Um, and I, I actually changed my part one briefly to like see which generation it was. Or I mean, it was like generation 79 or whatever. But then I said, okay, well, part one. Please tell me what the score of the 100th generation is. And then, uh, and it turns out that that is uh, 11,633. And I said, okay, well, and we're adding 109 every time. So, like, let's therefore just ask Haskell, what is 11,633 plus, am I just like, I'm not doing this wrong, am I? Did I get the, yeah. So 11,633 plus 109 times the number of generations left, which is 50 billion, thousand, million, billion, 50. So 50 billion minus 100 generations we've already worked on should be the answer. Uh, but it's not, I don't know why. It says I'm too low. Um, 
so I don't really know what the deal is. I guess one possibility is that you're supposed to, you're like meant to include the 20 that you already did. I guess I can try that. Anyway, like I, I entered that and I thought it should like definitely be right, but it wasn't. Um, what if I do this? No, that's too high. So, I mean, it's somewhere in between this number and this number, but I don't understand why. It should just be this one. Oops, sorry. It's in between the number I guessed previously. It should be this one, right? 109 times the number of generations left in between the 100 that we generated. And it's not like there's some weird off by one error because we iterate starting with init. And the zeroth element of that, which is what we would get if we ran times 100, is just the initial statement, state. It's before running any iterations. The oneth element is after running one iteration. So after 100, we've done 100 iterations, and there are still 50 billion minus 100 left. So I don't really know why this answer is wrong. It seems like it's obviously correct. So I must be doing something like, I don't know. And when I upload this video, I'm sure someone will point out my error. That's the nice thing of being on YouTube, I guess. Um, so this problem is still unsolved. Uh, however, I wanted to also update you guys on a previous thing that I tried to do in day 10 that I couldn't get correct. Remember I was trying to do this complicated, actually let's um, let's show you, I guess this isn't quite what I meant to do yet. Yeah, um, so, oh, uh, no, that's an older version. Um, okay, so let's um, let's check out this. Uh, I guess I should commit my work in progress on part two. Day twelve, part two, work in progress. Okay. Um, Okay, so remember that, recall, I should say, what? Uh, did I mean to check out the parent of that commit? Mm, what? Day 11, I was trying to check out day like 10, wasn't I? Ah, right. Okay, I just like was logging the wrong thing. Uh, so I had written this to compute the bounding box for a thing. I had been trying to do some cool stuff with a monoid because like computing, we kind of want to do four monoidal summations at the same time on the input list to get the minimum of X and the maximum of X and the minimum of Y and the maximum of Y. And I tried to do it with like tuples and min and max and fold map. And like, I, I, I was actually pretty close, but as I mentioned in a comment on that video, eventually, um, I had mistakenly believed that there was for some reason, no semi-group instance for pairs. There is one. It just isn't defined in the file I was looking at. It's part of GHC base and not part of semi-group part of data semi-group. So when I looked in the instance list in data semi-group, I didn't see one for tuples. Um, so what I did instead is go back and implement it the way I meant to be. So I said, basically what we need is a function which given a an ordinary point lifts it into a point with the right monoid instance. 
Um, and so that's a pair of pairs of monoidal things. Um, right, so we have a pair of minimums and a pair of maximums. And because minimums can be combined with monoidal append or with whatever you call semigroup concat these days, uh, and so can maximums, and pairs of things which can be combined can also be compared, and pairs of pairs of things which can be combined can also be combined, we now have this whole thing is a semigroup instance, which like when you say please glue two of them together, it finds the minimum x of each and makes the smallest chooses the smallest one to be the new minimum x. Likewise, the minimum y find likewise the maximum x. Likewise, the maximum y. Um, and so the only trick is we had to call just on the result um, because this was only a semigroup. It the difference being like a semigroup is any type which has an associative binary operation on elements of that type. Um, but fold map takes not a semigroup, but a monoid. And a monoid is a semigroup which also has an identity element, some a neutral element that you can like always add in. Uh, and min and max don't have a neutral element. There's no number you can say max of foo and x is the same as x. There's no foo for which that's true. Uh, so it's only these are this makes up only a semigroup, not a monoid. Fold map works only on monoids. You can give it a list of some monoidal thing, or sorry, you give it a list of something and a way to convert an element of that thing into a monoid, and it'll monoid depend the whole thing up. But it's worried that there might be no elements at all, so it needs a default element just in case, and we made that be nothing by lifting the result into maybe. So we say fold map just lift the positions of the of the list, uh, and then if it actually was a, a nothing after all, which it shouldn't be, but if it was, then please give me the default value, which is lift of zero zero. So if we had no points at all somehow, we would get zero zero as our minimum and maximum. But we know that's impossible, so it's just like we're just sort of telling Haskell that to make it feel better. So anyway, I just wanted to show you guys that I had uh, I, I did finally figure out how to do this. Not finally, it was like later later that day. But um, and show you what it looks like. Isn't like I mean, um, well, no, I don't want. I wanted to show you the Git. So I guess what I wanted to do was diff with this. Oh, I pasted twice. OK. Um, and like, isn't this kind of nice, right? Uh, instead of these like very repetitive five lines, we have just three lines of saying exactly what you want to do and nothing else. No repetition. I mean, there's a, there's a little, it kind of sucks that you have to like write out all of um, these things. But there's not a great way to fix that. Um, that I can think of. You, you kind of have to say there are four things because you need to compute four summations across the list. Um, if we were willing to compute the minimum x and the minimum and the maximum x as the first tuple, and then the minimum y and the maximum y as the second tuple, it could be made maybe a little bit better by using like by map on the tuple to map like min amper 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 max over both halves of the tuple, but like that just seems needlessly abstruse. So. Uh, this seems like a good compromise where you like specify what you want to do, but you don't have to get like super verbose about it, and it's reasonably legible. 
So, anyway, uh, that's all we have today. Just a short 15-minute video because I really didn't have time to commit to um, to starting on the puzzle for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.